What's up, everyone? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jammin' John. And we have an album review for you. Now, this one is a little bit different in terms of when it came out, uh, just because it's coming out again, or rather being re-released. We are going to go over the debut EP from Fossilization. He whose name was long ago forgotten. I couldn't not read that because it's a long title. Now, originally this was released on the 25th of March on Transylvanian Tapes and is now being re-released on Everlasting Spew. Now, this again is their debut EP. This band formed last year in 2020 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And good job, Everlasting Spew. Good job, Tito and, and Giorgio. I, I don't know how you guys keep signing these fucking amazing bands. But... I, I think they just get a hold of them. Man. That's, that's pretty much it. I would want to be on there. Are mm -hmm. you kidding? Dude, that's a killer label. This is a two-man Death Doom band, and they share members with the band Jupiterian, which is also a Death Doom band. But luckily, this doesn't sound too much like Jupiterian. This is whoa, way more raw, way more cavernous. <laughs> Jupiterian is definitely more about their own like lush soundscapes. These guys keep it very dingy and grimy and... Well, oh my goodness. man, we're going to get into it right here <laughs> with the opening track, Neanderthal Tunes, Unga Bunga Zombies. That is exactly what I mean, the song will conjure I mean, up. Yeah. The tremolo melodies on here are haunting. They're they're just disturbing. Yeah, well, they're so low registered. Like, normally, you know, tremolo has like a, a high, kind of a higher just toned melody, and this is just, ugh. Yeah. I mean, generally there is like two guitars tracked here. And you'll have one doing a like higher dissonant melody, but I mean, the low end carries out and the bass is very prominent. It is mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. steady drone throughout. But the cool thing about this, like right away I was noticing, like these are really cool melodies. Like these are catchy. Death Doom catchy. Again, not like, you know, catchy for any other music except for like death metal related <laughs> stuff but really haunting and just they capture a huge feel and with the amount of reverb on the guitars they sounded like they were recorded in the bottom of a well sounded like they've smoked camel non-filters for like 30 years the guitars grown <laughs> and i mean again effective you throw in these vocals which are throaty echoey cavernous you have Deep this growls swath of sound. Snarl, Oof. vile ugliness. Right away I was making comparisons to Incantation, Mortiferum, Hooded Menace, bands that know how to do this sound very, very Actually, well. I, I said it was like if Cannibal Corpse used tremolo all the time instead of chug. The low register vocals really reminded me a lot of Barnes, if, well, Barnes back then, not Barnes now. <laughs> if he was using a slower cadence, yeah, there is an important distinction there to make. But you still do have those up-tempo moments. And that was kind of a thing I liked on this. They know how to break it up. Like, whether or not they're playing, like, the same riff, they break it up well with, like, you know, a switch up to a blast. Right, that has a switch nice up with, like, a blast or, like, a D-beat or something. The drums carry a lot of the atmosphere here, too. And, I mean, you know, with Death Doom, I mean, one of the big things is droning. You, you kind of have to drone on these melodies just to sink them in even further. But, I mean, honestly, like, the first three tracks are textbook, grimy, Death Doom. Blight Cathedral and Carante. Blight Cathedral is probably my favorite track. Yeah, on dude. Here. Blight Cathedral. It, first of all, just a massive, massive wall of mud and murk and sludge. This song is huge. I mean, it's like driving on a dirt road on the foggiest night possible. Like that sort of rough. Like you're getting beaten around and you can't see where you're going through all the murk. And again, it creates this dismal, dreary oh, yeah. atmosphere. It sounds like it was recorded inside of the said Blake Cathedral. I'm sure it exists. <laughs> or or a dis like a, a musty pit. Uh, it sounded like corpses playing guitar in their coffins. Like it just, it being buried alive in cement. Yeah, I mean, that is <sighs> the whole feel. It, it's super oppressive. And I mean, it labors that feel. Like just when you think it's gonna kind of let up its grip a little bit, it just tightens it in a different place. That the breakdown in that song is disgusting. It, it I had sour lemons just the whole just. Meh. And like <laughs> this was one where I really got the giant like incantation vibe. Like 
all the slow spots in Incantation, mostly, when, you know, Incantation does that sudden drop out mm. to the giant Death Doom break. I can't wait for that discography. Oh, my God. That one's going to be that one's gonna be tough, man. I'm, oh, man, that one's going to be hard, because I love all of their albums. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Mm-hmm. When you get to the title track, though, I think that's where they pump up the aggression. Mm-hmm. This song notably opens up differently, because those first three tracks open very similarly. It, they pretty much start in with a droning tremolo yep. riff, and add then, another and layer. Then, right, and then it gets all doomy, whereas this one... Opens aggressive. Yeah, it opens, it, it's almost like a buzzing drone, like it's just noise. Like a really filthy Morbid Angel demo that no one's unearthed yet. Well, I said it was Morbid Cantation. Yeah. Yeah. I want to have a logo for that one because that band doesn't exist. So Morbid Angel so. and Incantation. I know. I know you know. <laughs> they know. I know they know. Now, I might have wanted to throw this track a little bit earlier just because it was a nice break because, again, the first three open very similarly, and they all have a very similar mood. This one is a stark shift, but when it hits the brakes, and I mean hits it hard, like they slammed to not hit a deer, (laughs) it slows down to just these giant droning single chords, which is a nice break because if there was one thing I was going to say that might be a negative on here is... They may overuse tremolo picking. It's prominent across the board, and the breaks from it are are just kind of like a welcome little vacation. Very few and far between. Like, you don't get it often. It's almost like I could hear the riffs being played in a different way. Like, if they would have, dude, just even a little bit of chug in this just would have really sunk it into the basement. Yeah. But... It doesn't. It keeps that tremolo, and again, it create. I mean, the atmosphere. It, oh, it's it's man, there. dude. It's, it's there. It's they there. You ever, it. you ever seen the slime that comes out of the bathtub in Ghostbusters too? Well, it's coming out of your speakers. Yeah. I love the melodies they're playing. I love the layers they're playing. I just mm-hmm. kind of wish they would approach them differently, as far as like just a picking standpoint. But at the same time, I understand that that's part of this droning sound. Like with all that reverb on the guitars, that perma tremolo fills up the sound. It drones right. on and right. it sounds evil and cavernous and dark and dingy and all the other appropriate adjectives we haven't said yet. I don't know if we've said dingy yet. I wrote a lot of adjectives during the day. Just Merc, filth, grime, all those things. Much like the last song, A Deplorable Epoch. The battle is a loss, there are no survivors. I like the war drum intro on this, mm-hmm. but again, it let in with that tremolo riff that again permeates the entire thing and I was like, well, Okay, but we're back to that, but it's still really good, Mm -hmm. and honestly, the thing that I loved about this song was the end of it. The end of it does this cool start-stop blast Mm -hmm. beat Mm -hmm. to groove thing, and it might be one of the heaviest moments on this entire album, but it only lasts for a few measures. But even the tremolo at the end, though, it sounds like getting attacked by hornets. As they slowly fade away, but they're hauling off your corpse. And he whispers the vocals during this part, and that's what makes it even more chilling. <laughs> it's, it's a whisper or kind of like a throaty, raspy groan or something like that, but it's a different vocal approach, and I do like that. I didn't think the vocals were like bad at all, though. Mm-hmm. I like I like his I really vocal like approach. Vocals. Like yep. He sounds like a big, scary monster, and that's kind of how you should sound in Death Doom, at least in my opinion. Overall, I think this is a solid EP, and I might need to go jam some more Jupiterium because if they're reasonably close, yeah, which they I are. Yeah, I do too. I haven't, I've never actually heard that band. So. I jammed a little bit just to see if there was any differences between the two, and there are some, but I mean, they're they're both very death and doomy and ugly and atmospheric, and I'll yeah. Take it. So overall, I'm going to give this EP four stars. I dig this, and I'm excited to actually get a copy of this now that it's going to be put out on CD on Everlasting Spew. I definitely want more of this. I mean, I love Incantation. Mm-hmm. I love Hooded Menace, mm-hmm. Mortiferum, the band we're jamming right now, Sempaternal Dusk. It has stuff like that. You know, if you love Death Doom and you love it really raw and dingy and ugly, <laughs> you may have already jammed this on YouTube, and I'm just going to go ahead and say go get a copy because it's really worth it. It's just filthy in all the right ways. Get it. That's how I was going <laughs> to uh, open my my spiel. Filthy in all the right ways. I'm also going to give this four stars. One of the things I love about Death Doom and Death Metal and the Sour Lemon Face. Just that you, you have no choice but to just give the music just this nasty scowl while it invades your your inner being with 
the slime in Ghostbusters 2. The only place I can fault it, again, is all the tremolo, but I also understand. Yeah. I I like Death Doom, and, and that's a big thing, creating that atmosphere, especially if you're not going to use synths. There's what, a little bit of synth, but... Yeah. Not, but, I mean, not, if yeah. you're not going to labor yeah. it, you know, if you're not going to use that as something additional, how else are you going to make this sound as disgusting as it does? Um, but I mean, I too, you know, like chugs, and I like I I like spicing things up, and I like you know accents, and but I have no overall real complaints about this other than tremolo. This is good stuff. Oh yeah, I'm 100 percent um, this. I want to. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I I want to see a full length. But yeah, overall. Solid way to kick the ass of my ears. If if ears had asses, they were kicked. You uh, do not know the anatomy of an ear. I, I don't. The the whole hip bone connected to the whatever bone I lost track. It doesn't matter because listening to this pulverized all my bones anyway. Yeah, reduced to festering slime. Yep. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the time. The time. We're also on Patreon now, too. Uh, if you would like to jump on there, there's a link below. And if you want to give us some extra support, we'll have podcasts on there. And we're just going to be peppering it in there with all sorts of random metal-related stuff and probably a little bit of extra nonsense because we're oh, us. Uh, right, we're us. There's there's a lot that you... <laughs> there's, a, there's so much that gets edited out. And there is one more thing I want to say because I still can't believe that it happened. Hi, Max. Max, Max. Cavalera, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh my God, dude. Um, I don't have words. I'm blown away. I couldn't believe it when we found out that you had said hello. Uh, that is. Oh, I'm I'm honored. Yes. Uh, I'm turning out to fanboy here. You know, I've had this tattoo since 2004, and it used to have color in it, but it's faded. And I, holy crap. Yeah. I, I... I'm. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna fangirl out here a little bit. I've been listening to Sepultura since I was a freshman in high school, which was way back there. Actually, and I was a freshman in high school yeah. when I heard KSAD. Arise, arise changed a oh. lot for me. So I mean, you have been part of my metal rotation yep. forever. Yep. And yep. I I'm I'm <laughs> I'm beyond elated that you like our channel. I, that's that's just absolutely mind blowing to us because I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. and any bit of fame is honestly a little bit mind blowing. <laughs> we're, we're 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 uh, mind blown. We're we're doofuses from the Midwest. Yeah, that real. like metal. That like metal. But I, again, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Like, thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. That that was absolutely awesome. You made my year. Yeah. Unlikely. I, I I don't know how it's gonna get much cooler. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I, but I, really I, don't. I welcome it. I welcome yeah. more cool yeah, shit like that. Great, cool stuff. We love cool stuff. That was that was <laughs> awesome. So thank you very much to Max, and thank you to everyone, of course. And of course, we will catch you later.